I'm Bishop Clement Amankwa Sini saying welcome to Restful Living, a life worth living. I trust that it's been a blessing, great, great blessing to all those of you who've been watching and sharing and, and thank you for your comments. Thank you for all the, 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 the messages you send and, and through Facebook and, and what have you. It's a blessing and it's an encouragement to know that there's someone there who is always listening to these nuggets of truth in order to learn how to be restful. That the, the very thing that God sanctified and made holy first was rest. And so thank you so much and God bless you loved ones for tuning in to watch me stream live from my cozy studio. Blessing, it's a blessing, it's a blessing. Well, God bless you. Um, it's, it's, it's been fantastic. We've run in this program because like I said, we've been encouraged by the testimonies. There are so much, so it's unbelievable. Very soon we're going to, um, I'm going to invite some guests here to share with you concerning this topic and how to really, really establish yourself in God's rest so you can experience more increase in your life. It affects your health. It affects your emotional stability. There's effect, the effect in restfulness because God does not want man to take credit so much as it were for you know, the things that he does because our tenders by default, we, we are able to um, you know, think that or we can get into a mode where we think that everything being done is by our, our skillfulness and, and what we do. But God has just invited us to be co-partners with him in this ministry. You are co-partner. You are co-laborer with God, and He's giving you it's a privilege being in the ministry. And He says He is the one who influences you both to will and to do of His good pleasure, according to Philippians. All right, so uh, one six, isn't it? Yeah. So it is God who works in you both to will and to do, and that is He. He wants you to enjoy being a partner. So you know, God gave Adam the opportunity to name all animals. Can you imagine? Name the animals. And every name that Adam put on any creature, any animal, was what God accepted and approved of. Can you see how powerful it is? Yet it wasn't Adam who created all these animals. He himself was made. You see, so God giving you the opportunity to name animals doesn't make you uh, the creator. You see, he wants to... He wants to take his position, but he wants you to partake of it. And you have to learn to rest and trust that he's the one who is giving you the power to even enjoy what that privilege, do you understand? That, that, is, that is what rest is about. Can you imagine if Adam was around when the world, the universe was being created? Why would God wait and create everything and create uh, the, 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 the skies and, the, and what have you created? Everything. And then, on the sixth day, he waited. He didn't create man on the first day. No, not on the second day, not on the uh, third day, not on the fourth day, not on the fifth day, but on the sixth day, God made man in his own image and likeness. So man woke up and everything has already been set up. And then he was just given the privilege and the authority and mandate to put names on all of God's creation. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Why not the first day? Why was man not there the first day? I believe knowing man, he would have taken credit for being a co-creator. <laughs> for being a co-creator with God. But God says, no, I'm going to make you rest. Live in my rest so you don't take credit for that. So if there's any laboring at all, you have to labor. Is there anything at all you want to, you want to strive and enter in? It's into his rest. With that place, when you are in that place of rest, is absolute confidence in God. Absolute confidence that he is the one who gives you power to get wealth. He is the one who gives you power. That thing lying there is so crucial. So you wouldn't stress up. God works through us to heal the sick. When someone gets healed, praise the Lord. It is God who is working through us. He commanded, can you imagine, Jesus commanded us to go heal the sick, not to pray for the sick. He said, go heal the sick in his name. 
we should heal the sick. And so we are not healers. We are just co-laborers. And he works through us. Isn't that amazing? That thin line, by knowing that it is not me, I trust in him. He works through me. So when someone gets healed, praise the Lord. If you pray for anyone, minister to anyone, and they don't get healed, you don't get <laughs> discouraged because it is not your strength. It is not your strength. You rather go more and more into his presence to be smeared with his anointing, to be able to do great things. So you don't take the credit. Neither will you take, as it were, the shame if nothing happens because you trust him. It is not you. It is him. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I've just introduced and give you a long introduction, and now I want us to pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for all who are listening and hearing and seeing, watching me. Thank you, Lord, that you, you speak to us to, to rest. And thank you, Jesus, that you said we should come unto you all you, we who are laboring and are struggling and that you give us rest. And we take our yoke upon us and we learn of you for you are meek and lowly in heart. And we shall find rest for our souls. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Wow. Well, we, we've been talking about rest, this subject of rest. I can't just explore it, you know, enough, but we're still on that journey. I uh, want to comb scriptures and go from every angle for all of us to understand the importance of this, that that is the thing, the first thing that God sanctified. If you believe in something we call the first mentioned principle, what did God call holy? First, it is rest. And God rested and sanctified that day. He sanctified. God sanctified rest. Isn't it amazing? Yes. In Genesis chapter 2, he sanctified the seventh day and made it holy. It's a very holy thing to be restful. Very holy thing. For God, the Bible says, he sees from his works that seventh day. He refused to work and sanctified that day. He said, it's finished. I've done everything and made man. After making man on the sixth day, seventh day, he sanctified it. So man started working in rest. So you must understand that if you are not restful, you will not increase. But if you are stressful and still increase, you'll be doing it against your own self. It affects your health. It affects your mind. It affects, that's where you struggle, okay? And God wants us to be struggle-free, struggle-free. All right, I want us to, you see, after sanctifying this rest, when the children, when God gave a, a commandment to Moses, he made Moses adopt this Sabbath day, keep the Sabbath day and make it holy. Keep the Sabbath. God made the Sabbath day holy. He engrafted it into the law. It was so important for, for, to God since he set it apart the seventh day that he put it that the Sabbath day should be a restful day. And that was in the Old Testament. The Old Testament Sabbath is not as the New Testament Sabbath. The Old Testament Sabbath was reduced to a day, was like just a day that, you know, but the New Testament Sabbath is different, okay? But let me read something to you, the effects of the Sabbath, what, why he told the children of Israel to keep this restful day. In Leviticus, it's interesting. Let me read it to you. Chapter 25, God said, from verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, that's the land of rest. Hmm. When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. In other words, make sure that you enact this Sabbath principle when you enter your restful place. Keep it. Keep that rest. And then he went on to say, six years you shall sow your field. And six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, you remember that? Seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. Even the land in which they were supposed to inherit needed rest. God says, let the land even itself rest. <laughs> he said, 
It will be a solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow nor field your field, nor prune your vineyard. Verse 5. What grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall reap, no, you, you shall not reap, sorry, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is a year of rest for the land. Verse 6. And the Sabbath, and the Sabbath produ produce of the land shall be food for you, for you, your male and female servants, your hired men, and the stranger who dwells with you. So he, he, God specifically instructed the children of Israel to use the land, they were farmers, predominantly farmers, to use the land and plant it and, and come out and, and produce uh, crops, you know, in six years. But on the seventh year, should leave their land to rest. And <laughs> it's, it's interesting, you know, that he was so, God was so, uh, you know, so, so stern about keeping the Sabbath. You know, Sabbath is a day of rest a rem to, to, to remind the, the Jewish people that it is God who is the source of strength. It is God who, who works in them both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I love that scripture so much. All right. But the effect, watch this, because he knew they were going to ask him questions about why. Because, you know, man is a, is a doer. Man is supposed to be a human being, not a human doer. Knowing how man is, and man is constantly on the edge trying to do things to, you know. He said, I want you to have a day of rest. And when man is asked to rest and trust him, it becomes very difficult because by default, we love to do things on our own, like I've told you. We love to do things and to, and, and to be pride ourselves in the fact that we did it. God says, seven days, don't, don't work. Don't do anything. Just rest. Guess what happens? Because we, we, they, he knew they were going to ask him questions. So from verse 20, all right, we go way to 20. He said, this is a question that he knew they were going to ask him. So he, he proposed to them, he posed to them this question. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our, in our produce? Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year. Oh, my goodness. And it will bring forth produce enough for three years. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat all produce until the ninth year. Until, it pro the, until its produce comes in, you shall eat of the old harvest. Oh, my goodness. Ma, ma, ma. Oh, it's a blessing. Listen, they're going to ask, if we don't farm on the seventh year, what are we going to eat? Because we must store in our barns. And God said, on the sixth day, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to command my blessing on the, on the sixth year to bring more harvest. The, the harvest will be plentiful for even three years. That even on the, in the eighth year and in the ninth year, I'm telling you, you're going to have more than enough from the seventh year, in the seventh year, in the eighth year, and in the ninth year. Because of rest. There was... There was <coughs> <laughs> restful increase is what I call it. Restful increase. Come on, loved one, listen to me. Restful increase. When you hit rest, God commands his blessing for you to produce more. That's what he's saying here. Don't, listen, work on the sixth year. Rest on the seventh year. And if you are in doubt what to eat, what to, uh, how to make money, in the seventh year, which I said, was this God speaking? Which I said is a day of rest. And you have to ask yourself, what shall we eat then? They said, this is what I'm going to do. Because of the Sabbath, because of the rest, I'm going to command my blessing. Why command? Because there's going to be evil spirits, I believe, fighting and resisting all these things. So I will have to command the land to respond so it will bring forth more than enough for three years. Because I want you to keep my Sabbath. That's what God is saying. 
Oh my goodness, Jesus has been made unto us the Sabbath. I'm not talking about Saturday or Sunday or Monday. It's not about a day. Sabbath is a perpetual thing. You have to enter into it. You know, the Bible said the children of Israel in Hebrews chapter 4, the children of Israel didn't enter into it. And there remains the promise. The promise is still that Jesus is Lord over the Sabbath. He came and broke all the rules about Sabbath. But Sabbath is more about restfulness. It's, it's a place where your soul comes to, where you know for sure that he's your source of strength. He is your supply. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the one who is not in control, but is in charge. God is not in control. He is in charge. We are in control, but when you rest in him, you reign with him through his righteousness. You rest in him. That place, there's a place, loved one, for you to come to where you know that he is the one who is in charge. He rules in the kingdoms of men. That's what he said. Oh, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. That's what he said in his word. And, and, and folks, this is what the Lord does. When you are restful, you enter into the rest. The principle, the lesson learned here is that he's not saying that on Friday you don't go to work uh, because Saturday you wouldn't work physically. And so on Friday, I'll make you have double salary. And then you, you know it doesn't work like that. It's not a physical thing. With the Old Testament, yes, it was so. But in the New Testament, a place of rest, a time where you can spend with God. It can be on Monday. It can be on Tuesday. It can be it, the day doesn't matter so much. As much as the, your, your soul, oh, he restores my soul. The psalmist said, come on to me, all ye that labor. Jesus said, come on to me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the rest we're talking about. Not about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The, the, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. And Jesus, being a carpenter, knew what yokes were. Yokes were what it's, uh, that device that is used in hooking two animals together. So they plow. You know, when we get hooked up with Jesus, my God, when he sleeps, you also sleep. Because when two animals are yoked together, when one goes down, the other will also have to go down. When one gets up, the other will have also have to get up. And that's it. When one moves in one direction, the other also have to go because they are yoked together. Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. What he means by that, when I rest, you rest. So one day, something happened. And the disciples, because they were not wearing his yoke, my goodness. In Mark chapter 4, I want to read it to you. It's very interesting. Mark chapter 4 from verse 35, something happened. Jesus was with them. When the wind and waves obeyed Jesus, that's what the title of the New King James says. I want to read this. Watch this. From verse 35, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let's cross over to the other side. <laughs> Somebody is about to go to the other side. You have stayed enough in where you are and your position. I prophesy to you that you are going to get to the other side. There's an another side waiting for you to get to. There's another side. Let us, let us cross over to the other side. There's always an other side for you to cross over and enjoy your blessing. Now verse 36 says, Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were with, also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. So this was Jesus after serving the multitude and multiplying bread and fish for them. After an evangelistic trip, all right, took, said, let's go to the other side. And he was in the boat with them, and they were crossing to the other side, you know, for... You know, and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into, into the boat so that it was ready filling. Now watch this. But he was in the stern. The stern is where, you know, you, you, where the, the boat is being controlled, used in steering. He was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? <laughs> How can you be sleeping? 
when there is windstorm and the boat is getting filled with water and you are asleep. I believe Jesus wanted his disciples to also sleep with him. Rest. All right? How can he be asleep when there's windstorm, when there's the, the waves and the billows are, are tossing the boat? Verse 39 says, Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. How was he able to say peace, be still? Because he had peace in him. If you don't have peace in rest, you can't speak peace to others. Oh, I want, to, I want to retreat that. I want to repeat it. If you don't have peace in you, you can't speak peace to situations. And so peace be still. The disciples were worried. Remember, it wasn't the waves and the storm that woke Jesus up. It was the disciples rather that woke him up. It is we who trouble the Lord, not situations. God is not moved by situations. And if he says we should put on his yoke, it means when he is resting, we should have also been resting. But we rather cry out and call for help instead of resting. So that's what it means. It's like, be, peace, be still. If you don't have peace in you, people of rest have peace inside of them. When you are restful, you have peace inside of you. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, isn't it? And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, isn't it? The peace of God comes as a result of being, you being restful. In a storm, trouble, tossy, if you can master how to rest in the trouble, you have peace inside of you to speak to situations. Loved one, listen to me. This is what he said. Watch this. Watch what he said to them. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. But he's, <laughs> and the wind ceased when he said, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? <laughs> If you don't rest, you become fearful. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Faith was not working. You see? So people of rest are people of faith. <laughs> people of rest are those who are able to master faith and speak to situations. The Bible said, they feared exceedingly and said one, they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? I'm telling you, the wind and the sea will obey you. Now, maybe next week because of our time, when you, you, you go on to the next chapter, you notice that they came up and, and, uh, and a, a, a man who has been in the tomb, who's been uh, excommunicated or whatever, cast into the cemetery to stay there because he, he, was, he was uncontrollable. He was, being, he was, he was demonized. And demons were driving him and he was cutting himself in the tomb and crying out and, and all that. They went to the other side and Jesus was able to cast that demon out of him. You see, if you are restful, you, are able, you, you cast demons out. If you don't have peace in you, you can't speak peace to your storm. If you don't have peace, you can't speak peace to your storm. The reason why maybe many prayers and many for prophetic words coming out of your mouth is not working because maybe they are coming out of a troubled heart and a troubled heart cannot speak to situations to calm down. You must master and learn of Jesus how to be restful. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lonely in heart. I'm so meek <laughs> and lonely in heart, Jesus said, and learn of me and you shall find rest for your souls. Your soul needs rest. Your soul needs rest to be able to speak that peace that it brings, the peace of God that passes all understanding is in rest because God said we should keep our minds on pure things, things that are lovely and the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is fantastic. This is what I'm spending my time to major in and master in. I can't say I've had it all together. No, I, I wouldn't say that. There have been some situations that I can be very shaken. But one thing is for sure, 
that I've learned over the years. And it's not about just preaching God's word. It's about uh, how effective has this thing worked on you. I believe in, in people being authentic, being real. You have to be real. Come to a point where it's real. You are real. If you haven't mastered it, it's, it's not a crime. You get there. You can get there. Uh, what, what will happen? You know, these are some of the things I do to, that has helped me by the grace of God. It's helped me a lot. If I worry in a situation, does it solve the, the problem? It doesn't. There are things that are beyond your control. <laughs> I, I must admit, when I say beyond your control, you know, it will only take God to come through for you. I, I've been there. And we all get there. Certain situations that you just have to just sit down and say, God, if you don't help me, if you don't help me, take, know what to do about this situation. You know what will happen. But I cast my care upon you. Oh, my goodness. And you help me. And just wait on him and rest in him. Because the worrying will not bring about the solution. You rest in the case and you disturb the peace of God. That passes all understanding. Your, your brains don't work. Your mind doesn't work when you are troubled. Okay? So why not cast your cares? Casting all your cares, for he cares for you. We're going to talk about that next week. But that is it. Number one, we've learned about how God says, you seven day, there's increase in the seventh day. On the sixth day, I'm going to command my blessing so you don't have to worry on the seventh day about what to eat. And I will command my blessing so that your land will produce about three years. My goodness, three years of increase. And because anyone who is ready to keep the Sabbath will experience the commanded blessing. There are certain blessings that God will have to command. Prayer will not even bring it. It is commanded blessing, you command it. Why? And one of them is keeping a restful heart. And rest also resting in him. When you're able to rest, you have more increase for more years than to struggle in restlessness. Oh, my goodness. I trust you, you've been blessed by that. And so we're going to come. I'm going to come from every angle from God's scripture for you to know that this thing that God sanctified, the first thing that God made holy, this restful thing, has been a crucial thing in our world, a world that has been troubled, News is so, so much bad news uh, on, 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 our, on our TV and all that. In the midst of that, we still have people who are trusting in the Lord and see him do great things. May you be one of them. May you definitely be one of them. So you live long, you don't stress your life. Stressful increase, my brother, my sister, it's not a blessing. Love one, it's not a blessing. But restfulness brings increase that will still keep your health and keep your soul and keep your family where you can have time with your family and your loved ones and don't die early. Don't get yourself into hypertension and high blood pressure. For God is in charge. Let's trust him and rest in him and take control of our destinies. In Jesus' name. I trust it's been a blessing to you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that this revelation will come to you and you will master it. May God give you that grace to master restfulness. May God give you that strength to know that he who has begun a good work in you will also accomplish it, will perform it on the, until the day of Jesus Christ. May he be with you in the valley of the shadow of death. He will be with you. May he order your steps to be at the right place at the right time to meet the right people. Is he who orchestrates, may Jehovah, who orchestrates all things to work for your good, may he orchestrate everything to work on your, on your behalf in the name of Jesus. May his favor envelop you. He says, weeping will endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May that God who brings joy every morning be your God and put laughter in your mouth and put a song in your mouth to sing. In the name of Jesus, may you trust this God with all your heart and he wouldn't disappoint you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for rest and peace in your family. I rebuke the enemy from, from the, that disturbance in the family. I rebuke that sickness from your body in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that stress in the name of Jesus, that spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. 
may it leave your house. May there be peace in your home. Oh yes, I speak that peace of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Receive it. Receive it. Peace has come in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow. Wow. Aren't you blessed? Well, so soon I have to sign off uh, another Wednesday. Sign off. I trust that you've been blessed. But keep on sharing. Share with others. Share with others. And um, it's a blessing. Uh, those of you who are there who are watching, I never want to close my broadcast without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Very crucial. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 is a powerful scripture. All right, come. Come. Jesus said, come. So I'm going to lead you to him. Take it as your own prayer and go to him and grab hold, grab, grab this rest for your soul. This is all you have to do. Pray this prayer. Take it as your own prayer and pray it after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I receive Jesus into my life to be my Lord, my Savior, my leader, my forgiver. I believe that he died and he rose again the third day for my justification. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for making Jesus my healer and my deliverer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, let me hear from you. Write to us. Send us a message of all that God is doing in your life. Let's hear from you and let's... Let's, let's help you. If you need help, you go on our website, vbci, www.vbci.org.uk. Again, www.vbci.org.uk. If you want to join any powerful church, you can join our church. If you are closer to any of our branches, go on the website, click branches, find out if there's any branch closer to you and join, for we are one big family but in different locations. Or else, get a Bible and go. Join a Bible-believing church, a church where the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of the kingdom is preached, where they invite people to receive Jesus and pray for the sick and help you grow and, and, and be a blessing to your generation. So God bless you, and I have to leave now. Sign off and say, hey, the rest of your days will be the best of your days. God bless you, and see you next week.